Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. It's deep dive time and GWS are playing Port Adelaide today. I want to talk about Toby Green. Like Rankin, he's one that you want to just go and watch. Here is Toby, but he plays on the edge. So I want to talk about superstar players who have found themselves in a little bit of trouble over the time. And Toby, it's one of the reasons why at times we critique him, but at times you want to go and watch this guy play. Superstar, but can get himself in trouble, Bill, which leads me to players over the years who are gun footballers who have found themselves in trouble. And no doubt about that is fabulous Phil Carmen. I love the way he played. One of the great players of all time. But could get himself in a bit of trouble, especially with boundary umpires and things like that. But he was ahead of his time. He was ah, a super player. I see player. what you did there. Yeah. What? Ahead of his time. Yeah. Ahead of I didn't mean that. Yeah. But a superstar, but <laughs> yeah. also very, very fiery. And you've got one, Damo? Yeah, big uh, plug of locket. The, mm. uh, the game's highest goal kicker of all time. It was just compelling, <laughs> even off field, when he's throwing crutches at Eddie Maguire, when he uh, had an injury problem. You've also got the oh. probably the most famous or infamous oh. moment with uh, Peter Caven, where the very next year, Ron Joseph, who was running the Swans at the time, went and recruited him after that incident. Oh. And then. So many other issues, and he also put Brad Fox, so yeah. one of your uh, little former tiny uh, Essendon people, yeah. uh, in, into a into a near coma at one Whoa. stage uh, too, Lordo. Still amazing, Lordo, that Lance Franklin got down to number five in the draft, and that was uh, perceived behavioural issues when he was younger. But he's been an exemplary player since he came, and he got down to five, and Richmond didn't take him. So my nomination early days, Lance Franklin. Yeah. Well, Richmond, we're going to play the Sydney Swans. I are playing the Sydney Swans today, and I want to go back to. Round 23, 2016. This happened at the SCG. I was listening on the radio at the time, and I've never heard commentators say a team is at rock bottom like this. This was Damien Hardwick. Yep. He was questioning himself at the time about just where he's at as a coach, that he hadn't become the person he wanted to be. And this was 2002 to 2016, uh, just the win-loss. So all the losses, you know, wins 132, 193. The last since that game... 49 wins, 17 losses, two premierships, seven finals wins, and only just one loss. So it brings me to turnarounds because uh, this was one of the great turnarounds that I've ever seen in the history of football. I couldn't see that coming. You just thought Richmond are Richmond, TJ, and there's just no trust in them, and they've gone on to be one of the great sides of the modern era. Mm. And, uh, Bill? Yep. Well, it's the Mighty Cats, of course, 2007, after what, uh, coming into round yeah. six, they were two and three, a lot of people had written them off there, including John Ralph, who said they were uh, lacked heart and inconsistency, but it was a player-led thing, this, mm. with Matty Scarlett, of course, and Paul Chapman stood up during the week, Bomber Thompson was even under the pump, he might have got sacked, mm. and guess what happened, they played Richmond at Telstra Dome back then, and they won by 157 points. Stevie J was first game back. He'd been suspended by the players again and uh, he'd missed the first five weeks. He came back for this game. But they were just outstanding. I remember watching this. I couldn't believe it. I reckon it was the Logies night. I was at Crown having a few frothies. And, just, and then, of course, this led on. They won 15 games in a row, Lordo. Thanks for that. And then, of course, this is the 07 Grand Final, Kane. Hope you're watching this. When they won again by 117 or 13 points. And that led it's to a grand final. Bill. Hey? Thanks for that. Right. It was 109. Kane, it's got vision of you there. You're oh. devastated for one reason. Bill's crying There's for another fat reason. Cat. And the, on the left is you, Bill, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but that was unbelievable yeah, turnaround, so, that round six game. And you're, this one Where's hurts the Lions? me. The start yeah. of their uh, three premierships in a row dynasty, uh, Lordo, unfortunately your team and you personally were part of it. They went into round 10, 2001, with a 4-5 scoreline. Lee Matthews made the famous comment about if it bleeds, you can kill it. And that's the why they started that particular season. Did not lose a game. Did not lose a game from round 10 onwards, won the premiership against that same yeah. team, the, the Essendon team. And this is where it all started. Lee Matthews making that statement. Predator movie that Arnie Schwarzenegger starred in. And there was this monster from, uh, alien monster from out of space that was killing all these people in the South American uh, jungle. And all of a sudden they shot this monster and they discovered it bled. And Arnie's classic line was, if it bleeds, we can kill it. And we reckon Essendon can bleed. Mm. And Whoa. this was the uh, the action. Jonathan Brown making a name for himself in that particular year. The Bombers coming off the extraordinary Acker. season 2000, which uh, resulted oh, in their premiership. And that. then the Lions beat the Bombers in, in that particular year's flag and then did the same against Collingwood in the next two seasons to make it uh, three in a row and then lost to Keynes Mob in 04. But that was the start of it all. Risky business on Lee Matthews' part, wasn't it? Because it can go one of two ways, though. Yeah, I asked him that question only weeks ago, TJ. He said, no, I didn't truly believe it, but you've got to come up with themes every week to try and get your players going. And we'd lost, I think, two games in about oh, a year and a half. 
So he's just trying to get his players up and going and they didn't lose a game from that point on. So phenomenal what went on that day. And the big ask today, Ooh. bring it back. Carlton played the Western Bulldogs. I'll start with you, Kane. I'll put up the graphic first. You can pick one player of the two captains. Who do you take out of Marcus Bontempelli and Pat Patrick Cripps to play for you for the next 10 years? You can see both of them, three best and fairest. Mm. Bont has the flag. Obviously, Cripps doesn't just yet. But, Kano, you can have one of those players. Who do you get playing for you for the next 10 years? Yeah, I go to Bont. He's uh, more damaging, kicks more goals and wins more games. So uh, I think for me it's a reasonably simple one, as much as I love Patrick Cripps. Bill? And Marcus? I'm the same, resoundingly, Bont and Pelly. Bont and Pelly for me for pretty much the same reasons as Kane, the mm. use of the footy. I, I'm going to go Cripps because I think what he's done in a substandard team, yeah. uh, which is what he's had to uh, put up with for most of his career, imagine when he's in a team that he's actually up point. and about and yeah, firing. Very good point. Um, but the other stat you missed there is sort of like ambassadors for their clubs, and I think they're probably equal there. Yeah, yeah they're both sensational. I'm, I'm, I like your points, but Bontempelli just for me, a little bit bigger and kick more goals. Yeah.